All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to get started today. Uh, our standard today is 7.03, summarize agricultural, commercial, and technological developments during the Song dynasties and describe the role of Confucianism during the Song. Our objective today is simply that, summarize the many developments and achievements made during the Song Dynasty and describe the role of Confucianism during the Song Dynasty. All right, so today we're, we're mainly gonna focus on the achievements made uh, and some inventions that were made during the Song Dynasty. Uh, but first, let's take a look at our do now this morning. I should receive a copy of that here. So let's, let's look at a couple highlights and details of that. Uh, if you will go ahead and read this document for me, please, and then go ahead and answer the questions uh, for your do now. All right, and we're back. Hopefully, y'all had time to complete that. So, let's take a look here. So, yesterday we talked about um, how after the fall of the Han Dynasty in China, that that China had fallen into a time period we call the period of disunion, which which lasted for about 300 years. And during that time period, uh, we said that, that China was full of chaos and war. Uh, we said that, you know, there was a lot of suffering going on, that people uh, were facing hard times. And, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was a very unstable time in China. That China was tore apart. There wasn't a central government. You know, there was four different kingdoms ruling and constantly fighting each other for power. But then China was finally uh, reunited by two things. So we said that first, you know, the religion of Buddhism came in and brought those people back together um, because Buddhism teaches uh, people a way to escape suffering in life and, and to find inner peace. So because everybody was suffering and there wasn't any peace really happening during the period of this union, this new religion was very uh, appealing to them. And a lot of people turned to this new religion uh, as a way to escape all the suffering and, and escape those hard times in life and to find peace. And the second thing that brought the people together we discussed yesterday was the Sui Dynasty. Remember we said that Emperor Wendy uh, brought the, the people together by, by using his military and conquering each of the four kingdoms and uniting China under the rule of one emperor. All right, and so, but we also learned that, you know, the, the Sui Dynasty did not last but for 40 years. And, and when, Wendy, when Wendy passed away, his son took over and uh, became emperor. And he did some great things, but he, he mistreated some of the people of China. And, and they kind of got upset with the way he was doing things. They saw them working hard and then him living a life of luxury. And so they revolted against him. And after they revolted against him and killed him, uh, a new dynasty was formed called the Tang Dynasty. And that's kind of what our do now is about here this morning, which you should have read. So I'm just going to go through the questions real quick. So it says, can you name the dynasty that took over control in China after the fall of the Sui Dynasty? All right, if you said the Tang Dynasty, you're absolutely right. The Tang Dynasty began in about 618. And number two asks us, how long did the Tang Dynasty last? All right, you should have seen the text. You should have highlighted here that it lasted for 300 years. So you want to make sure you put in your in, your, in a complete sentence in your own words. You know, you could say the Tang Dynasty lasted for 300 years. So that's a whole lot longer than uh, the Sui Dynasty lasted, which was only 40 years. Uh, but you know, it's still you know in comparison to some some empires, that's not really that long. All right, now number three, describe the accomplishments made by the Tang Dynasty that helped bring China together and made China stronger. All right, well, if we look here, right here uh, in the second passage here, you should have highlighted the evidence in the text. It says, Tang emperors expanded the roads and canals that brought the country together. That is what united them, uh, the Tang dynasty, by building more roads and expanding the roads they had and the canals that they had connected more people in China to each other. People could travel to more places. They could trade with different people now, which ultimately is going to unite them and make them stronger. All right, number four, explain how Buddhism entered and spread into China. So we talked about how Buddhism became a very popular religion during the Sui Dynasty and during the period of disunion, but it was also pretty popular during the Tang Dynasty as well. 
uh, especially after that revolt and the, uh, the problems with the Sui Dynasty when it ended. So it says Buddhist missionaries entered China along the Silk Road and introduced the religion to the Chinese people. And that is, missionaries is going to be one of our words for the day. A missionary is a person that goes out and shares their religion with others. Once again, missionaries are people who go out and share their religion with others. So these missionaries came into China along trade routes, the Silk Road, which you should have talked about last year. Remember, the Silk Road was a, a set of trade routes, several different routes between China and Europe and other parts of the world. Number five, list the teachings of Buddhism. So what is this religion? Why, what, what did it teach? Well, a couple, couple of teachings you should have seen here is that one, Buddhism... Uh, teaches that suffering is a part of life. Secondly, the reason people suffer is because they want too many material possessions. And then thirdly, by living a wise and moral life, people can learn to escape suffering. So you should have seen, you know, as we've talked about, these people turn to Buddhism to end their suffering, to escape these hard times that they're living in and to find peace. And our last question, explain how Buddhism teachings help the people of China. It was just simply that, what we just said. The Buddhist teachings help the Chinese people endure the suffering that followed the dynasty's collapse. Now, once the Tang dynasty ended, we get into another dynasty called the Song dynasty. And the Song dynasty is known for their many, many, many great achievements. Okay, so... Um, what you need to do is there is a video on our on our agenda here. This is the Song Dynasty introduction video questions is what we're going to answer, but it's a short video about the Song Dynasty. All right, so I'm going to play that for y'all real quick. So let's watch. And as, as you go along uh, throughout the video, constantly pause and answer the questions that we have here. Let me pull those questions up for us. All right, so here's our questions here. Identify how the Song Dynasty was different than the Tang Dynasty. Identify what the Southern Song government began to give farmers and explain the result of this. When the economy be began to grow during the Song Dynasty, so did the, what? Name the three famous Chinese inventions that originated during the Song Dynasty. Identify what the Chinese government began to use printing for. All right, and this is a first ever in history. Number six, summarize how the Song began to use gunpowder. Number seven, summarize the role of Confucianism in Song China. Number eight, can you name who became a dominant force in Asia towards the end of the Song Dynasty? Summarize how the Song Dynasty came to an end. And then finally, summarize the legacy of the Song Dynasty. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to post the link to this video on this page here. What I want you to do, I want you to just search this. You can use your PlayStation or your computer, uh, your phone. And if you would just type in this link here. Okay, and the video should be titled, Discovering China, the Song Dynasty. It's about 6 minutes and 20 seconds long. So go ahead and watch that video here. All right, so I'm going to pause, so you can pause the video, my recording now. Go ahead and go to this link, watch the video, and as you watch the video, you can pause it and answer the questions along the way, and then we will discuss those All right, now hopefully you had time to watch the video and go through and answer your questions. So let's talk about what we found here in the text. So hopefully your answers are similar uh, to what I've got here. Let me, uh, let me pull mine up here. All right, so let's go over here. So number one, identify how the Song Dynasty was different than the Tang Dynasty. We saw in the video that uh, during the Song Dynasty, we see a revival or a new interest uh, back into Confucianism, which was a religion uh, that had existed in China for a while. And then another difference was that 
uh, the Song Dynasty's military wasn't as strong as the Tang Dynasty's military. Our second question asks us, identify what the Song government began to give farmers and explain the result of this. You should have seen in the video that it said that they granted them ownership of land, which led to a huge increase in rice production. The economy began to grow and change. So, used to, you know, in China, not everybody was able to own land. And the government here in the, Tang, in the Song Dynasty began to give their farmers their own land. And because of that, the farmers were able to plant more and grow more crops. And as a result, you know, they're able to raise more rice and other crops. And therefore, the economy is going to raise. When we say the economy, we're talking about the money flowing through that country through trade, through selling and buying of goods. So it begins to grow. And, and number three says, when the economy began to grow during the Song Dynasty, so did the population. Because, because they're able to grow more food, because they're able to make more money and create more jobs, they're able to support and feed more people. So therefore, more people move into China during this time. Uh, people have more children. And the population, which is the number of people in an area, begins to grow. Number four asks us, name the three famous Chinese inventions that originated or came, came from uh, the Song Dynasty. So we see there were several inventions made in China, especially during this time, but the three most important is printing. So they developed a way to print things onto paper. The magnetic compass, which is going to help them find directions and navigate the seas. And then gunpowder as well. Number five, identify what the Chinese government began to use printing for. This was a first ever in history. When we see that the government here, the Song Dynasty, begins currency production. When we say currency, we mean money. They begin to make money. They were the first government to print paper money. All right, well, how did they use gunpowder? Okay, we know gunpowder is used for many different things today. But here, uh, they, they use gunpowder uh, mainly for weapons. Uh, and, and one of the first weapons they used was, was bombs that they would use to launch from their ships to the enemy. All right, this summarized the role of Confucianism in Song China. All right, so Confucianism, this religion, this, it's really not technically a religion. It's more of a way of thinking. Uh, they follow the teachings of a guy named Confucius. Um, but this, this encouraged them and helped the Song to, cre uh, to create a better society where they focused on families and communities. And it also changed their artwork and their styles and their culture as well. Um, and when we talk about Confucianism, we'll see that Confucianism really focuses strongly on different relationships in society. All right. And so, so can you name who became a dominant force in Asia towards the end of the Song Dynasty? You should see that the, the Mongols just north of China started to become a very powerful empire themselves and a very powerful force. And we're going to talk about these guys later on this week. But, um, you know, the, everything's going good for the Song Dynasty. You know, they're making all these achievements. They're doing well for themselves. And then all of a sudden, this, this empire, the Mongols, they come in here. Uh, and they actually end up bringing the Song Dynasty to an end. The Mongols uh, first captured the Jin Dynasty, just north of the Song Dynasty or Empire, and then invaded the Song Dynasty and conquered it. So they went to war with the Song, and the Mongols won, and they take over the country. And our last question from the video says, summarize the legacy of the Song Dynasty. Now that's our next word for the day, legacy. So what is a legacy? A legacy is something that someone is remembered for. So, so when we pass away, our legacy is going to be what we're known for, what people think about us, you know, when they hear our name after we're gone. So, uh, you know, the, like, for instance, Michael Jordan. What is Michael Jordan's legacy? Well, Michael Jordan's legacy is that he was one of the greatest basketball players of all time, that he was known for his skills on the basketball court. That is his legacy. So here it's asking us to summarize the legacy of the Song Dynasty. So what, what did the Song Dynasty do that's important? How did they change the world? What are they known for? So in the video, we see that, that the Song Dynasty protected and preserved Chinese culture, mainly Confucian values. Their artwork has also carried on for years as well. They're also known for their three inventions of gunpowder, printing, and the magnetic compass. Those inventions have changed the world. So we're going to see here, uh, 
that the Song Dynasty played a huge role in kind of changing the culture of China and, and, and changing the world with many of their inventions. Um, so next, we're just going to, before we really dive deep into the Song Dynasty tomorrow, uh, the last thing that we're going to look at today is, is a text that I have here. And it is, uh, it is entitled, Ancient China Inventions and Technology. You should have this document in your packets. Uh, so we're just going to read through this real quick. Uh, and then after we are done reading, you need to go through and answer the questions. You can refer back to the text uh, to help you answer any questions you aren't sure of. Always refer back to the text. Okay, so that's always a great idea and a great tool that you have for you. So let's take a look here. So China has, has been known to make inventions all throughout history. Even today, they make great strides in technology and many other aspects of the world. Um, so we're going to take a look at just some of the other inventions that were invented by the ancient Chinese, not only just in the Song Dynasty. So here, let's go ahead and get started. Y'all follow along. So it says, the, the ancient Chinese were famous for their inventions and technology. Many of their inventions had lasting impacts on the entire world. Other inventions led to great feats of engineering like the Grand Canal and the Great Wall of China. Here are some of the notable achievements and discoveries made by the engineers and scientists of ancient China. First, we have silk, probably one of the oldest and most notable achievements of the Chinese. Silk was a soft and light material, much desired by the wealthy throughout the world. It became such a valuable export that trade routes running from Europe to China became known as the Silk Road. The Chinese learned how to make silk from the cocoons of silkworms. They managed to keep the process for making silk a secret for hundreds of years. So we get the name of the, the major trade route between China and other parts of the world uh, from this material. You know, even the Romans loved silk. The wealthy, the rich Romans in the Roman Empire would constantly be buying and trading for silk from China. And and and, and what's interesting here is the Chinese kept the 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 ingredients or the the strategy uh, of how to make silk a secret now why would they do that think about that for a second why would they keep this a secret okay so it's kind of like if i had a restaurant and i was known for my barbecue and my barbecue sauce so i'm not going to give away my ingredient on how i make my barbecue sauce because if i do that people will stop coming to my restaurant when they can just make it for themselves or they may go somewhere else so i want to keep it a secret just like they are here, so they can keep making money on this product, so they can control the trade of this good. The next thing we have here is paper. Paper was invented by the Chinese, as well as many uh, intersecting uses for paper, like paper money and playing cards. The first paper was invented in the 2nd century BC, and the manufactured later perfected around 105 AD. Then we have printing. Woodblock printing was invented in AD 868 and then movable type around 200 years later. This was actually hundreds of years before the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg in Europe. So, you know, printing is very important. It helps us make copies. Um, their strategy they developed was just like this, this, these wood stamps. They would carve out a piece of woods with different Chinese characters and use them to print them onto the paper. You know, you kind of move it around like you would on the game Scrabble to make it say what you wanted to say. Then they would put the ink on there and then press the paper to it. So they did this hundreds of years before the Europeans developed a process similar. Then we have the compass, which we see come along during the Song Dynasty, as we saw in our video today. And the Chinese invented the magnetic compass to help determine the correct direction. They used this in city planning at first, but it came very important to map makers and for navigation of ships. So it really helped them, you know, travel different places and to sail the seas and, and you know, to find their locations. Then we have gunpowder. Also comes along during the Song Dynasty. Gunpowder was invented in the 9th century by chemists trying to find the elixir of immortality. And what that means, an elixir is a potion or a, a mixture. Uh, for and then it says for immortality. Immortality means uh, to live forever. Okay, to be immortal. Um, so they're trying to. What's kind of ironic here? It's not really funny, but it's it's ironic that they're trying to uh, invent something that would make them live forever. Uh, and in fact, they accidentally invent something that which we know has led to the deaths of many people. 
So not long after, engineers figured out how to use gunpowder for military use, such as bombs, guns, mines, and even rockets. They also invented fireworks and made great, beautiful displays of fireworks for celebration. So, you know, fire, you know fireworks are a cool thing that come out of the invention of gunpowder, but we have, you know, these weapons that are developed also. So, you know, like I said, it's ironic that they tried to develop a potion to, to allow them to live forever, and instead, actually, it... Uh, create something that does the total opposite. And, and the way the story goes is that uh, when they were actually developing the mixture, um, it actually blew up on them and actually hurt and killed several people and, and burned several buildings down. So very unfortunate there. So uh, the next thing we have is the boat rudder. The rudder was invented as a way to steer large ships and this enabled the Chinese to build huge ships as early as 200 AD, well before they were ever built in Europe. Some other inventions include the umbrella, porcelain, the wheelbarrow. Uh, porcelain is, you know, like what plates are made out of. Uh, it's kind of like that clay that's almost like a glass. You know, that's why we call our, if you have a china cabinet in your house where you keep the nicer plates at, that's where we get that name from because porcelain came from China. Uh, hot air balloons, seismographs to measure earthquakes so they could detect earthquakes when they happened and how big they were. Kites, matches, stirrups for riding horses, stirrups are things you put your feet in when you ride the horse, and then acupuncture, which is a, a form of uh, therapy where they put the little pins in you to help with pain. All right, so you can also read some of the fun facts here listed here as well about some of the other inventions uh, that the Chinese made, and you need to make sure you go through uh, and answer the questions. So go ahead and do that real quick, and then we'll come back and go over your answers. All right, and we're back. So... Uh, identify two of the great feats of civil engineering accomplished by the engineers of ancient China. You should have seen that it was the Great Wall and the Grand Canal. Secondly, name the important invention that the China, ancient Chinese invented before Johannes Gutenberg did in Europe. We saw that the Chinese developed a way to print way before the Europeans did in the text. List the four great inventions of the ancient Chinese civilization. So what are the most important four inventions that they are known for that they made and that would be uh, gunpowder paper printing and the compass all right number four identify what ancient chinese chemists discovered when trying to find an elixir for immortality we talked about you know it's kind of ironic but they they ended up accidentally discovering gunpowder number five identify the important ingredient that the ancient chinese used to make silk you saw that they used the cocoons of silkworms. I don't know what a cocoon is. You know, the worm, before a worm turns into like a moth or a butterfly, they wrap themselves up in that, that kind of, you should call it a blanket, uh, but it's a cocoon. And then, then there they transform into a moth or a butterfly. Number six, describe what the compass was used for when it was first invented. All right, so the first thing they used for, city planning. What does that mean? That means uh, when they were building buildings and homes and planning out new cities, they used a compass to make sure all the buildings uh, were faced in a certain direction. Which of the following was a use for gunpowder? Fireworks, guns, bombs, rockets, or all the above. It was all the above. They used gunpowder for all of these things. Number eight, identify the invention that allowed the Chinese to build huge ships well before the rest of the world. That was the boat rudder. That is that piece under the back of the boat that allows them to turn left or right. Number nine, name the invention that the Chinese kept a secret from the rest of the world for hundreds of years. And that was how to make silk. They didn't want other people to know how to do that. Remember, because they didn't want them to uh, be able to make money. They wanted to make sure they controlled the trade of that good. And then finally, number 10, explain how the ancient Chinese first used kites. Okay, and we saw under the fun facts section after you read that, that they used it to, uh, to do signals with to their army. So they could put up a certain color kite to tell you the enemy was coming, or to say all clear, or to say that we need to retreat, or to advance on the battlefield. All right, so make sure you review these. Make sure uh, you read the text. And we will continue with the Song Dynasty in more detail about their specific achievements during the Song Dynasty and then Confucianism tomorrow. You have a great day.